As a rogue, would you like to enhance your finely honed skills of stealth and agility with spells? Find out if the Arcane Trickster is the right subclass for you. What's going on, YouTube? I'm the Mind Flayer Slayer. And I'm Dr. DM, and today we're bringing you the first of four Earl <laughs> Rogue subclasses. That is the Arcane Trickster. Beloved, back for 2014, we're going to cover all of its abilities from 3 to 17, let you know if they're good, what's changed from 2014, and stick around until the end. We're going to give you our tier ranking for this subclass so you know if it's good enough for you. So let's get started at level 3. Spellcasting, you've learned to cast spells. Let's go. Yes. You get three cantrips. Mage Hand and two other cantrips of your choice from the wizard spell list. Take two strike, take two strike. Also, Mind Sliver and Minor Illusion are very good. You, when you gain a rogue level, you can replace one of those cantrips, except Mage Hand with another wizard cantrip of your choice. And when you reach rogue level 10, you learn another wizard cantrip of your choice. Spell slots. Mm -hmm. The Arcane Trickster spell casting table shows how many spells you have to cast of level one plus. You regain all expended spell slots when you finish a long rest. Whenever you gain a rogue level, you can replace one spell on your spell list with another wizard spell for which you have spell slots available. And something really important here to talk about is that now there's no restriction on like enchantment illusion or yes. whatever now it's just like any wizard spell Anything. right so this gives you a lot of width here for the arcane trickster better than was before even just in this capacity and intelligence is going to be your spell casting ability for wizard spells that's the same from 2014. Mm -hmm. and of course you're still kind of like that one third spell caster don't forget that so it levels up kind of like the eldritch knight a little uh, slow fighter yeah, yeah for sure but you get spell casting on a rogue which is in of itself, especially the wizard list, is fantastic. We've had a Arcane Trickster play before and it's mm -hmm. a busted class. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. At level three, you also get Mage Hand, Ledger Domain, or as the French say, Ledger Zemal. <laughs> when you cast Mage Hand, you can cast it as a bonus action and you can make the Spectral Hand invisible, which comes in a lot of fun, Huge. a lot of clutch. Uh, a lot of tying shoelaces was done, speaking of uh, Many, Matrix. many <laughs> times we tied shoelaces. You can control the hand as a bonus action. I think that's new. Uh, and through it, you can make decks, sleight of hand checks. Pretty cool. So maybe you can like steal something or maybe some, pick some locks. Uh, who knows? A lot of fun with this mage hand. Absolutely. Now you gotta wait all the way to level nine, so pretty big gap, but here you get magical ambush. If you have the invisible condition when you cast a spell on a creature, it's disadvantage on any saving throw it makes against a spell on the same turn. I kind of like this because yeah. there's lots of spells that are kind of like save or suck, as in they have powerful abilities, like a whole person, for example, right? And it's kind of your whole turn if you don't make it work. So you definitely want it to work. So giving a disadvantage is really, really important for these spells, especially as a rogue, where you're kind of sacrificing your sneak attack for a spell, right? And the invisible condition seems like it might be hard to get, right? Like I need to cast invisible myself, but here's the secret. In the new 2024 player's handbook, Invisible is also the hide action. As in, you do the hide action, you're successful, you will now have the invisible condition. That's insane. So this is pretty awesome. You can then hide with your bonus action and then cast your spell to really debilitate your enemy with disadvantage on those saving throws. You're very crucial for them to work. Having a fireball come down at disadvantage is going to be busted for a rogue. That's awesome. At level 13, you have Versatile Trickster. You gain the ability to distract targets with your Mage Hand. When you use the trip option of your Cunning Strike on a creature, you can also use that option on another creature within five feet of the Spectral Hand. That's not bad. I mean, if you have your Spectral Hand somewhere else, there's multiple targets. But I would say this is kind of limited because first you have to be casting your Spectral Hand. Is it really going to do that much in combat? I don't think so. Yeah. So this is kind of like a dead level for me, honestly. I would agree. There's some it's pretty cool stuff. It's a little stuff. unfortunate. Yeah. It's yeah. some maybe role play viability here, but other than that, that's not pretty so, much it. Yeah, not so great. And then at level 17, you have Spell Thief. You gain the ability to magically steal the knowledge of how to cast a spell from another spellcaster. Immediately after a creature casts a spell that targets you or includes you in the area of effect, you can take a reaction to force the creature to make an intelligent saving throw. The DC equals your spell save DC. On a failed save, you negate the spell's effect against you, and you steal the knowledge of the spell if it is at least level 1 and of a level you can cast. It doesn't need to be on the wizard's spell list. For the next 8 hours, you can have that spell prepared. The creature can't cast it until the 8 hours have passed. Once you steal a spell with this feature, you can't use this feature again until you finish a long rest. So I think that this feature is incredibly powerful. I realize that there are some downsides to it, but being able to negate the effect of the spell that's being cast on you, being able to prevent that creature from casting the spell again for the next eight hours, mm -hmm. especially if it's like their signature spell or their signature type of damage, and then being able to prepare it, even if it's not on your wizard spell list, I think is really fun, really creative. Sure, I wish this went up to a level that you couldn't cast or maybe even 
two levels higher than what you could cast, but it's still a very powerful ability. You mentioned with it, and while it is fun and thematic and flavorful, uh, it comes at a high level, level 17. Now, this at this point, you'll be able to cast level four, level five spells at the top end, which means on your big gods, on your big creatures at this level 17 plus tier four play, uh, when is your DM really going to realistically be casting from like a main boss at level one to four spell? I have a situation. What if you are trying to counter spell? Being able to steal a counter spell from the DM is okay. huge. That is a lot of fun. Yeah, I would say the counter spell. That's great. pretty big. If anything, for that, that takes it up a notch. But overall, big spells at eighth, ninth level, whatever that you're fighting Tiamat or other of gods, uh, it might never come into play except for maybe a counter spell. Uh, imagine that you're at level 17. Might never come into play. Just keep that in mind. I wish that this was maybe at level 13. I think that that would be a little bit more fair. Yeah, you can enjoy it. Yeah, that'd be more enjoyable at that point when even though you proportionally have less spells and spell levels, it would be of more fun. Now, having to wait all the way here, this kind of makes it so you maybe want to start multiclassing or something yeah. with this class because uh, it's so kind of like forward heavy, I think. Agreed. But Agreed. overall, this is still an awesome class. Just intrinsically having spellcasting as a rogue is fantastic even if the higher level abilities might not come into play all the time they're still there still fun still cool so 100 percent. what do you think i am giving this a overall a b plus a minus yeah, i think it's too. rock solid like it used to be i wish that they had given it a little bit a little bit more oomph mm -hmm. um but also again you know the spells that you can cast are things like find familiar you can add that into your list you can then have a familiar that's always helping you get advantage mm -hmm. Wizard spell list is amazing. It's, so. The wizard spell list is incredible. Yeah. And so I think that you should never underestimate this class, and it really has the ability to be powerful. So overall, this is a fun, flavorful, powerful class that will not serve you wrong, and it's good to play for you and your campaign, especially if you love rogues. So this has been a review of the Arcane Trickster. If you enjoy our content, please consider sneak attacking that like button, subscribing, saving, ringing that notification bell, leaving a comment down below. All of this, we so appreciate. We love engaging with all of you in the comments. And if you want to support us more directly, you can also go over to fanrolldice.com, get some of those amazing shiny math rocks you were always going to buy. Type in code GG10 at checkout. You're going to get 10% off your order, and you're going to be giving us a kickback so that we can continue to upgrade this content and continue to level it up for all of you wonderful viewers. And of course, you can join us on YouTube at the join button right there on our homepage. You can be a green squire, green knight, green lord. Help us directly. We super appreciate that as well. Uh, if you could. So this has been a review. It's time to cast some spells magically elusively.